if your community is perceived as unsafe, you're not going to go out and be physically active. It's just a fact. The Preventing Violence Healthy Eating Active Living Project explores the obesity epidemic from the standpoint of preventing violence, which prevents physical activity opportunities. Um, we decided to focus on Western Chula Vista, which is a catchment area of 50 to 80,000 residents. Any particular area of Western Chula Vista could be upwards of 75 percent, 80 percent Latino. And so we're also working with a, a focus on underserved populations, low socioeconomic populations, and um, the community is essentially bifurcated. To the east is a higher socioeconomic bracket of uh, residents, and to the west where we're uh, situated and focused, there's an, an inequity in resources. In 2009, we had what we called the chronic disease agenda, which tackled some of the chronic diseases that were affecting our community residents. And so within that agenda, it was shown that safety was a huge component. And so from that part, it was like, okay, this is an opportunity when Dana came along with Hill, this is an opportunity for us to really get involved and to really get into the safety component of it. So um, we jumped on board. Um, and from that, since then, the county has several other initiatives that are dealing with safety specifically. One or two of the requirements of the of being a pro pilot project with Preventing Violence, Healthy Eating, Active Living uh, was to have youth at the table, was to have a county public health department at the table, to have an obesity prevention partner, which we served in that role, and then a violence prevention partner, which was uh, Institute for Public Strategies. And then we had other partners that were also in, invested in the common goals that we shared to improve health and quality of life, physical activity promotion in Chula Vista, healthy food access in Chula Vista. So our partners came in from Network for a Healthy California and also Walk San Diego. I was particularly interested in this project because you can't have a safe and vibrant community when there's that perception of fear or um, you know the, the presence of violence and crime. SEPTED, which is the acronym for Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, um, is a concept that was actually generated here in the, in the United States. Uh, Jane Jacobs, an architect, came up with a concept and it's looking at land use and design and how you can create a community or a, a development, develop an area in a way that it actually deters crime. SEPTED to CHIP is really an intermediate step to identifying um, safety issues at a specific site and then helping pe people that participate in our process realize more about how the environment in a broader scale influences or undermines people's ability to have a healthy life and a good quality of life. Okay, move some of that right on this side over here. Obviously, there's a, a concern around graffiti. It's all throughout the report. And most of that graffiti was on walls and utility boxes. So why not bring public art, community art, to the utility boxes, not only to deter graffiti, but also to make the Western Chula Vista environment a more interactive place, a more interesting place. We're taking pre-Columbian design symbols that are strong and powerful and recognizable to the community at large in this particular area. When we go out there and we paint these utility boxes, it will be like part of ourselves out there. So it will be like our community, it's part of ours. There's a concept called place attachment. And really that's what you want with residents and especially youth in a community. If they're attached to the place, if they're connected, they're going to really contribute to that community, to that neighborhood in a positive way. By bringing the community out to do the boxes and to be a part of that, it just creates this ownership and this excitement to be part of a community and involved in a community and just brings it all together. There were several simple but significant steps which brought us to the point of developing the report, which was representative of the people and the organizations that participated. Our first step, as uh, identified by my, my colleague Tanya, was to take them out raw to each site and have them just take pictures of what concerned them. Going through all six sites, 
all the photos from all six sites provided us the opportunity to collect a second round of input that was extremely insightful and complete in terms of facilitating the community residents, namely the youth, going from problem identification to solution based on the principles of walkability and crime prevention through environmental design. And so with those two rounds of input and the photos taken, we were able to go site by site in identifying recommendations, not only for the site, but also the surrounding environment. Uh, they came out with a great uh, critical analysis of some of the issues in the areas that they were looking into, and better still, came up with some possible ways of helping to resolve the issues. And since that time, uh, Dana and his crew have been working really steadfastly on all those sorts of issues, even to this day. And it's been a huge benefit for these areas. Uh, there's through beautification measures, through recommendations to city staff um, about things that we could do as a city physically to make lasting changes in some of our problem areas has been a great impact. The youth, I think, has a really interesting perspective and I think that has a lot of power in the community. And I don't think a lot of kids, kids and youth in general know that, that they have a voice. And so with, this assess with the assessment, we kind of were learning, you know, how to use our voice and where we can put it so that it's heard and where it can make a difference. I have learned um, the importance of working with, it, with the community, um, working together, how we can't really do a change when it's only one person, but when there's a lot of people getting together with one common cause, like, we can actually make a change. I think it was their impact, their involvement, the way that they owned and spoke to the issues that each of our opportunities to share, which really made the difference and caused departments and MTS and Chula Vista Police Department and redevelopment to really loop back with like, okay, this is real. Thank you so much for your input and we're gonna show you what changed. And so we're redesigning our platforms to be more open, to really uh, make it a better waiting environment and to really upgrade the experience for those who want to use transit. And I think that uh, the efforts that Chip pointed out in their report, what they were seeing was that they do want to improve uh, the areas even around the stations. Uh, in the transit world, we always look at the um, walk to a transit service as very important. The youth and community adults that participated were extremely insightful and very much into what we had to share with them to really kind of build the capacity of their leadership and their perspective to see how the environment influences or undermines public health and safety. And so to me, that's the most important element of the project, to have that authentic community participation that lives on.